Hey everyone, my name is Kim Swenden and I'm a senior software engineer at Google and I wanted to share with you today my STEM story. And uh, I'll tell you first a little bit about what I do. So I'm an a engineer at Google, like I said, I work on Google Arts and Culture. And the mission on that team is to make the world's art and culture accessible to anyone, anywhere, for free. So I really enjoy working there. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about how I got to my current job. So for one, I'm from Washington, D.C. Grew up there, spent 17 years there up until college. And uh, I actually grew up going to a French school. So my dad is Belgian, my mom's American, and I grew up speaking French in all my classes. So math and French, physics and French, chemistry and French. <laughs> and um, after that, I went to Yale undergrad and I got, believe it or not, a bachelor's in theater studies. So I really wanted to be an actor. And uh, I love being on stage and telling stories and having an audience. So I decided to pursue that. I also really loved math, um, but that is where I took my first computer science classes. And I didn't major in it, but I discovered that I really liked it. And to be honest, I sort of assumed that even though I was only 20, that I was too old to get into computer science. So I doubled down on acting and uh, ended up going to London to get a master's in classical acting, specializing in Shakespeare and doing Shakespeare in London Nothing like it, it's amazing. And uh, then I moved to Los Angeles and I became an actor in Hollywood. So you may have seen me on some of your favorite TV shows. I did Bad Men, True Blood, Criminal Minds, Chuck, um, and uh, really, really enjoyed that. And after I turned 30, I thought that I, I felt I wanted something more stable. And I missed, I'd always circled around computers. So I was like designing websites for my theater company, for example, or I was, um, taking a course in web design. I was trying to find ways to get back towards that sort of computer science type stuff because I really liked how it worked. I really liked solving problems. I really liked the the logical rigor of it. Um, the fact that you go step one, step two, step three, and eventually you find an answer. And I really liked building things, I discovered. So when you're acting, you're telling a story, but you don't have something physical to show for it really at the end of it. And I really discovered that I liked having a website I could show people. Um, so I started wondering if maybe I actually should do computer science next. Um, and I was really intimidated, but I got a lot of great encouragement and support. And I applied to UCLA and got in for the master's program. So that is where I went next. And I graduated in 2014 with a master's in computer science. And um, Google hired me right out the gate, which was amazing. So. I will tell you a little bit about some other current state of things, and then um, I'll answer some of the other questions. So I'm a back-end engineer, which means that I write code that runs on Google data centers, as opposed to a front-end engineer who might write code that runs on like a mobile phone or um, your browser, for example. And um, I primarily write in C++. Um, I am also a AAAS if-then ambassador, which um, is a wonderful position where I get to invest time in reaching out to people like you to encourage you to get into STEM. And um, believe it or not, that's a picture of, I have a statue. <laughs> they, uh, they 3D printed all of us because it turns out that there are fewer than, I think it was in the entire, in all of the United States and in the, in the 10 largest cities plus DC and one other one, they found that there were only six publicly accessible statues of real American women, or fewer than six. Um, so they decided to 3, 3D print all of us. There are 125 AAAS if-then ambassadors who are all professional women in STEM. And I'm um, really proud that I can say I now have my own 3D printed life-size statue. Um, other cool facts, uh, I'm currently in Spain. And um, I'm going to be transferring to the Paris office, which is where the arts and culture team is based. And I uh, haven't been able to do that yet because of COVID and circumstances, but um, I am in Europe at the moment. And um, yeah, some other th stuff. I love hiking, I love camping, I love reading, um, doing theater, seeing theater, Shakespeare. So I thought I'd share with you today a little bit more about my job, um, what I do day to day, stuff I love about my job, things that I might find challenging. So like I mentioned, I'm a back-end engineer, um, and lately it's mostly been working in things like databases where you store information that can help process users' requests. Um, I've also been doing some machine learning lately, which is a totally different area for me, um, dealing with recommendations. That's cool. That is one of the things I love about this job, is you're always going to be learning new things. It's never going to be boring. <laughs> 
And um, something else I love is I really love working as part of a team. I, I think computer science can have the, a bad stereotype, um, rep, like a belief that you're working alone in a basement somewhere, right? Uh, that it's very solitary and you're just in front of a computer screen all day. And that's actually not been my experience. I'm really grateful for that. I'm a people person, so I wouldn't do well with that. Um, so yeah, it's been really lovely working on, on bigger teams. Um, at Google, I was on ads first and then I was actually on YouTube. So this is my third product area at Google. Um, so definitely always learning new things. And um, yeah, so part of a regular day will involve things like going to meetings, um, writing code, of course, but the job of an engineer is not just writing code. It's also, it's tackling big problems using engineering. And so the first thing you wanna do when you're tackling a big problem is figure out how you're gonna solve it before you actually start writing the code that you hope will solve it. And so that's, for example, writing design documents or having meetings with people to brainstorm and come up with ideas. And there's actually a lot of creativity involved, which is fantastic, um, which I also didn't know until I became an engineer. I sort of thought it was much more, much more like math, like follow step one, step two, step three, and then you're done. And um, it's much more open-ended than that. So um, in case you didn't know that, <laughs> And uh, let's see, what do I find most rewarding? Besides working with people, I also really love the fact that I am I'm building something that, other, that others get to use. So like when I was on YouTube, I worked on channel subscriptions and to see that um, a bunch of people were, were using the stuff that I was helping make every day and it was really positively impacting their lives, um, super gratifying to know that you're having that kind of positive impact on other people. And uh, I guess, what if I find challenging? I have found challenging that because I got into the field a little later than, than I think most people do, I sort of had some, maybe you've heard the term imposter syndrome, but it's this idea that everyone else around me must know more than I do. And so I'm playing catch up, right? I'm not as good at them as them and I'm, I'm trying to figure it out and they already have all the answers. And what I've come to learn at Google and really appreciate is that everybody has a certain amount of that. Everybody sort of questions themselves and, and wonders if everyone else sort of knows things that they don't already know. And I actually have a great story from my first hackathon. I did a hackathon while I was a, an intern at LinkedIn. And I was paired up with four other people and uh, who were all significantly younger. And uh, they had an idea for a prototype and we were gonna launch right in. And one of the guys said, oh, I know, let's use Node.js to build this. And I'd never heard of Node.js at the time. And I'd never, definitely never used it. And I immediately assumed that I was gonna be dead weight on the team, that I was gonna be the one slowing everyone down and that I wasn't gonna be able to meaningfully contribute. And I, I got, I psyched myself up so much that I actually like went to cry in the bathroom because I was just so overwhelmed. And once I calmed myself down, I came back out to try to help. And one of the other team members sort of said, oh, here, you can help me out. I'll, I'll walk you through what we're working on. I said, okay, great. So I sit down with her and as she's talking me through things, I'm realizing that she doesn't know Node.js either. <laughs> and she's just figuring it out as she goes. And she trusted that she would be able to figure it out, right? And that taught me a fantastic lesson, which is that as an engineer, the things that make you a good engineer are not what you know, it's how you learn and how you apply things and how you break down and solve a problem. So one, one tidbit of advice as you're exploring STEM is that if you ever feel really intimidated or like something's happening you should already know how to solve or anything like that, it's just a matter of figuring it out as you go and learning and you fall down, get back up, try again. And that's actually just the engineering process. It's very normal. So I tried to think of if I had any advice that I could give like my 12 year old self, right? What would it be if I were to be able to go back? So here's what I came up with in terms of advice I might be able to share with you based on what I've experienced is um, for one, don't be afraid to make quote unquote mistakes and I'm putting them in quotes on purpose. Um, as I mentioned, part of the engineering process is, is iterating. It's starting out with a prototype or something simple. You see if it works, you learn from that and what worked and what didn't, and then you sort of build on that. And I think I spent a lot of my childhood trying to like get the right answer. Um, I loved, I love tests because I felt like as long as I memorized things and I put it down, I could get an A and that was like achievement unlocked. Um, 
And what I've come to realize as an engineer is you've got to be willing to try things out and maybe they're not going to work, but if you don't try, you you might get stuck and not actually like grow in the process or develop something. So, um, so don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid if something doesn't work the first time. Code never compiles the first time you run it. <laughs> um, and that's just part of it. So just know that that doesn't mean that is not a reflection on your skills. That is not a reflection on your abilities. That's just part of how it works. Um, and the second piece of advice was, um, and this one's super important, you don't have to look a certain way and you don't have to like certain things in order to be a good engineer. And I say that because I think there's a lot of stuff on film and television and in the media that tells us that engineers are white men who work in a basement somewhere and never see the light of day and they love video games and they live on the internet. And, um, and honestly, with all of that imagery coming at me, I sort of assumed that I wouldn't fit in, that I wasn't made to be an engineer because I didn't fit that that sort of description and that, that image. And it's really important for you to know that that's not what it means to be an engineer. Um, I had a fantastic discussion with a, a senior engineer, actually director at one point, where I said, look, it was early on in my career when I was an intern, and I said, I don't know if I'm cut out to do this, like, I don't, I don't really want to go home and like write a compiler for fun. And I feel like that's what most engineers I think of do. And he looked at me and he goes, Kim, I don't want to go write compilers for fun. <laughs> um, that's not what it takes to be a good engineer and to like make meaningful contributions. And so that gave me a lot of permission and an understanding that I had those stereotypes sort of overlaying my sense of belonging and I didn't need to. So, you know, I do theater for fun, um, which is not what you might normally think of as something an engineer would do in their part time. But I know a ton of Googlers who do incredible things with their spare time, hobbies, they mountain climb, they do improv, they paint, they cook, they, I mean, and, and the cool thing is that the more diversity you have in people's exper life experiences and interests and um, worldview, like, the better the better the engineering process and the better the product because it it just helps to have all those different perspectives on how to solve a problem and finally um what i would recommend is that a good way into stem is to focus on something you're passionate about right and then from there think about how might science help you solve problems in that area so for example um i have friends in in the performing arts who found ways to apply STEM solutions to things that they wanted to accomplish as performers. So a friend of mine is a dancer and he used uh, programmable lights in order to create a dance totally in the dark. And it was an expression of his creativity, but as an engineer, he was able to use those skills to sort of bring new things to the, to the table. So, so focus on what you're passionate about and it doesn't have to be the things that you might think of engineers being passionate about. It's, it's anything and everything. And then it might be cool to think, well, all right, how could STEM, any STEM field, apply in helping me sort of dig deeper into that area? Thanks so much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this talk and that it's given you a little bit more perspective into the world of STEM and software engineering. And um, I'm really proud to have been able to, to do this as uh, for Nuevo Fundacion, and um, what an awesome mission. Um, here's our contact information. So I recommend follow them, send them an email, let them know, get on the website, see what all the resources they have to offer. It's a great resource in terms of encouraging young people to get interested in science, technology, engineering, and math. And um, yeah, if you want to leave some feedback, here's a link. I realize it's a long link, so I'll hold on for a second while you take notes if you want to write it down. <laughs> oh, I guess you could pause the video. That works too. And um, yeah, thank you so much for listening.